All right, it's time for episode 148 of Soccer Cards United. This is the world's greatest soccer card podcast. Uh, my name is Jason. That's Enzo. Hi, Enzo. Hello, Jason. Um, we just want to say before we get into the show today that uh, we're going to have a little, what did you describe it as, a barrage? A barrage of products introduced, reintroduced, in some cases, replenishment, I described it as, Jason, off, off air. Yeah. Uh, some new products coming in, new old products coming in. That makes sense? To SoccerCardsUnited.com. Yeah. So if you want to keep track of that, either spam the website a little bit in the next 24 hours or sign up to the mailing list. Yeah. Uh, there. Sign up to the mailing list on SoccerCardsUnited.com to make sure you don't miss a beat uh, at the store. Um, right. Let's get into it because, Enzo, this is very exciting. Uh, today we get to talk about the first um, hobby release of the year from Tops. We had Panini come out with uh, Premier League Prism. Mm. So that's kind of like marks the beginning of the hobby season. At the, the hobby season. Footballing season. Yeah. Towards the tail end. When everything's just uh, getting to its fever pitch. And the, the manufacturers debut all their products. And Tops, not to be left um, behind for too long, came out with, quite rightly, first edition. That was their first oh, yes. edition um of the uh 22 23 season and we were all expecting to see champions league first edition but we never expected what we actually ended up seeing no i was surprised everyone was surprised this was 2022 23 first edition not for the champions league but rather for the uefa club competitions oh shit so now there have been other products where they've had uefa club competitions and that has included the women's champions league yes this is not that no women's champions league in this. So this is just the men's UEFA club competitions. Okay. Um. So just blue box like last year, but different looking, of course. Yeah, exactly. Um. So let me just see if I can. Oh look, there's nothing on the screen. What's happened there? Come on. Come on. You're on sports card nonsense. Not know how your mic works. Oh, by the way, if anyone hasn't tonight, seen, uh, don't promote that. If anyone hasn't seen sports card nonsense, don't promote that. It was crazy. <laughs> Don't promote that. No. Um, right, so there you go. First edition. Blue like last year. Different shade of blue. Mm. Um, Great observation. Thank you. I did, the level of analysis in this show is huge. Champions League. Europa League. Europa Conference League. What do you think of the design? Um... Look, that's so it's go. not very exciting that's, no, the, I mean, that's everything we need to hear I don't hate it you don't hate it the right. one I hated the most was the Jude class Champions League Chrome design right right. this is fine I would say I would think I think actually what this uh, what this is speaks to is Top's ongoing struggle with the size of the font that the player's name is written in <laughs> this is something they have never quite got got uh, figured out they're not happy with it they change it every year um, sometimes like in the Jude class the name, the player's name is written tiny and tiny 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 writing other times it's written big and what they've gone for here is they've gone for a uh, first name small second name big that was mad because they're like we just can't give up the space to have the whole name big but we need to have something I like the Champions League logo on the top left and I like the club badge at the bottom right yeah that's cool it's also kind of fun, I guess, if you're breaking it, if you're imagining maybe you hit a one one you haven't seen the card yet, you kind of check, oh, it's Champions League, you bring it the other way, oh, it's Bayern Munich, yeah, oh, who is it, you know, that could be fun. <laughs> That's your best breaker impression, oh, who, uh, who is, is it? it? That's me hitting a one one oh, oh, who, who is, is it? it? All right, here, oh, we, here go. we go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Um. So yeah, I don't know, my hope is that I know like that maybe the point of first edition is yeah. that it's showing us what's coming. Yeah. But last year, first edition, flagship, chrome light, mm-hmm. chrome, sapphire, all had the exact same images. And that broke my heart. There's a lot of great images in soccer. I don't know why we can't have variety in that. Yeah. Now we have we did have variations, didn't we? Couple. Couple, but not but the base images were the same, you're saying. Yeah, which made me sad. Yeah. So we got uh, to see some of the first edition cards of Jamal Musiala uh, for the Bayern Munich of the Champions League, uh, Johan Bakayoko for PSV in the Europa League, Julian Alvarez in the Champions League. The return of the Star Ball, don't jump by that, Jay. Sorry, the return of the Star Ball. Star Ball parallel, people. How could I... Uh, Come on. The Star Ball parallel did hit 
huge heights uh, last year for about two weeks. But like first edition Starball was actually very rare in first edition. Like in, in, in the hobby, I think it was more common or in flagship. But for first edition Starball was... Was rare. Hard to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And last year, first edition had the highest parallel was to 30. Yes. So it's going to be interesting to see if that's repeated. Yeah, this year it hasn't actually been noted yet, which makes me a bit sad because it makes me think it's going to be higher. But I would say if it's not bigger than 50, it's still fine. Right. Because like a 50 in a chrome box is a big hit. If it's the right guy. But this isn't chrome, remember, this is paper. No, I know. But I think to 50 in a Champions League product is still decent. Yeah. If you're guaranteed to 50, that's kind of cool. There's Gonzalo Ramos oh, yeah. with a colour match. And uh, they threw in a Hal and Otto as well, just for good luck. And I hate that they made it a one of one. That makes me have no confidence that it's not just a one of one. Well, Panini took all of the Hal and Autos to make Prism. Oh, they put them everywhere. That boy's been signing a lot since he got to see. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at the checklist here. Um, interestingly, no checklist link on the tops.com, the, U- the US site. But a checklist link in the UK that is interesting. site. Isn't that an interesting observation? So, um, just the formatting of this checklist was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I can words. make... So you got loads of different sets, right? So you got Veterans and Rookies First Edition Variation. Veterans and Rookies 1 First Edition Variation, right? But I'm just going to show you number 1. Then you have Veterans and Rookies 2 First Edition Variation. Then know. you have Title Winners First Edition Variation. Combo Cards First Edition Variation. Base card, Starball, Starball Foil Variation, First Edition. It's a bit mad. <laughs> Future Stars, Starball Foil <laughs> Variation, First Edition. Future Stars, First Edition Variation. This is insane. This is an insane checklist. The auto checklist was crazy. So the auto checklist. Uh, Garnacho, Griezmann, De Ketelaire. De Ketelaire, who I believe has now gone a full calendar year without scoring a goal for club or country. Shoot your mouth. Um, not a great signing. Shut your mouth. Dejan Kudusevsky, uh, Marrera Jr., uh, Dusan Vlajevic, Eduardo Camavinga, Erling Haaland, e. Emil Smith Rowe for the Arsenal fans, Fabio Cavallo, Hyunmin Son. Hyunmin Son, by the way, is in the middle of a, uh, a spat with his fellow Korea uh, teammate, uh, Kim Min Jai, uh, who plays for Napoli, because after the one of their friendlies, one of Korea's friendlies over the international break, uh, Jai said that uh, he's not really he's very mentally tired he doesn't want to think about the national team he just wants to go and play for Napoli and uh, Son being like the hero of Korea was very upset with that very offended very offended uh, Jack Grealish uh, I think there was a bit of unfollowing on Instagram and stuff like that oh uh, Jack Grealish Kyogo Furuhashi do not that serious it's yeah no it's this is real he was saying he blames himself for Conte getting sacked yeah well in fairness if he had been performing to his normal standard, standard they'd be been in the league. Uh, <laughs> Liam Messi, Neymar Jr., Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, um, who was recently in the uh, Chelsea or in the in the Barcelona dressing room celebrating with them after a win uh, in El Clasico. Um, he can't go. He wants to go back to Barcelona, but he can't because you're not allowed to play for three different clubs in the same season. Well, that's a fun rule. Um, Pablo Torre, Gonzalo Ramos. Rooney Bardigi but does like, going back to Barca count as a second club another club yeah I think so yeah, he can't be registered I think three different times oh. or so, there's something like that and then Sandro Tonali for AC Milan can I say last year's autograph checklist for first edition was awful um, so it's nice to actually see some big names there I think Neymar was the best name last year that's Everything right yeah. was terrible to have Messi Haaland in that company along with even Sonny yeah, Fabio Carvalho, Garnacho. Like that's a much stronger autograph checklist this year than last year, and obviously the price point was a lot better as well. Yep. So no, I'm okay. scared about the number of parallels. I say must must have. It's because you, you're thinking something has to give. Something has to have gotten worse. Yeah. Um. Now, Enzo, before we, because uh, one of the things first edition does is it tells us roughly who we're going to see in uh, who's our rookies. Who's our rookies year? for the year? Who, who's our UEFA rookies? And last year a lot of the rookies that we found were quite obscure so and then I, obviously they expanded from just the Champions League to I'm yawning a lot can I just say I had a shipment arrive at 7am today I'm very tired okay that explains a, a, a truck pulled up outside your house at 7am this crazy morning. it was the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life right so that's so I didn't speak any English yeah it was just a mad he had flip flops on it was crazy <laughs> it was crazy. genuinely the craziest shipping experience and he wasn't with any courier he was just independent contractor nuts 
It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't. He did a good job though. So now that we have, so, so what you're saying is you, you don't find the podcast boring. No, I'm actually having a great day. It's really sunny. It's beautiful outside. Summer is here in Dublin. Finally, the beginnings of it. And I actually feel great. I just had an amazing breakfast roll. Jason, mm-hmm. I, brought, I brought you one as well. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. I'm, Thank I'm you for that. Great guy. It was delicious. They cook the eggs fresh at this place. It's the eggs have to order people, and that's how it should be everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I'm just actually just super tired. That's fine. But well, I feel good. Yeah, good. So what I was gonna say was, um, the uh, now that we have the other clubs from the other competitions except Champions League, they've gotten an opportunity to go even deeper with the rookies. Uh, and you know me, I, I I like a bit of prospecting. I I know a good bit about who's coming up and all that stuff. A player cannot score a goal in a friendly <laughs> without Jason figuring it out figuring out without me putting them on the podcast um so i went through the rookie uh checklist Mm. and i have a document which i haven't made public in any way i've never seen you do anything like this in excel before in my life and there's a lot of times where that could have come like (laughs) you're sick you're a sick man well this is important i have to know who the rookies are is there a note in there about someone's hair uh, there could be, yeah. Um, well, some one fella used to have crazy hair, and now he doesn't, so it's hard to recognise him because he doesn't look like himself. So, Enzo, I now have a Excel document which tells me every rookie's name, their club, their position, their age. There's also a metric which is had Jason ever heard of them before before making this list. Is this on our drive, or is this a personal Excel of yours? It's <laughs> it's personal, but I can put it on the drive. Would you like that? I'm not sure, but maybe, yeah. Yeah, I'll st- I'll stick it up there. Uh. Be nice to be able to look at it on my screen here. Yeah, I get I get it over to you just just now. This is something I'd like to go through with a fine comb because it looks people just for for the listeners. Yeah, it looks sick. So there's a little. So it's it's name club. And like I'm wondering if Jason's ever been diagnosed with something. Oh, know all the tests came back negative. <laughs> they don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah, uh, 2022, UA for rookies. That is now in our Google Drive, Enzo. It is probably the biggest um, data take up on our Google Drive right now. Um, so it's just interesting. Like some of them, we will, you know, we will have heard of. Oh yeah. Uh, like your your Julian Alvarez Wait, there, your Mikhailo Mudrick is there. Um, you know all the all the guys you've heard of, but then there's a few that you've never, in your wildest dreams, uh, heard of. There's 55 total. Yeah. And I'm about to filter off the yeses. Of the 55, Jason hasn't heard of 21. Mm. Not as bad as I thought. I thought it was going to be like, you haven't heard of three and you're just... No, no, no. This That's what I mean. So w- my question is, w- what's happened here? Is it that... Am I slipping or are tops going crazy? Yeah. They're going deep to get these guys. Um, Could be with a boat. So I don't know how. So what should we do with this information? Well, <laughs> listen. You know, you're the only one with this information in Excel sheet. I think. So, like, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll just go through and I just point out some notable ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some don't. No, notable rookies. Okay, and obviously, before we even get into it, Cavara is not here. No, uh, rookie, so rookie of the year is not here, and that's because Napoli are like wilding out with their license apparently in Champions League stuff. Yeah, Napoli won't give. They don't like the Champions League, I guess. I don't know. Don't like Champions League, or they have a deal, secret deal with Panini. Who knows? Who knows what's going on? Um, so probably some mafia shit. Yeah, I mean there are there are. So let me see. I don't even know how to. Uh, <laughs> don't even know how to organize this. Um. <laughs> sorry, what I've been met with is just too much data. I've, I've created a problem for myself. <laughs> like, for instance okay so there's ones like Julian Alvarez Mikhailo Modric Alejandro Garnacho and in the notes I've just written we all know him what about Colo Muani Colo Muani what have I written for him he's really good and someone's gonna pay too much money for him yeah that's just I suppose you say, you say he's really good but someone's gonna pay too much money for him yeah absolutely um, they've slapped a uh, 100 million 100 million. million yeah I mean that's too much money for him for him yeah Um. The likes of Amin Gawiri is on this, and he's there for Ren. Oh, but he he had a Leon Leon sticker back in twenty nineteen twenty. Then he was at Nice for a couple of years, and now he's at Ren. How do they treat him in Panini foot? Not as a rookie, I don't mm. I don't think he's twenty three all the same. Yeah, great player, been around. Um, but then Colin Moani's twenty four. He's a rookie. Yeah, he's mad. He just popped up though. Uh, 
Orkun uh, Kokchu plays for Fine Yard. He's 22, and in the notes I've written, he's the bloody Fine Yard captain. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Turkish fella, is he? Yeah. He's the bloody Fine Yard captain. So I just, I don't know if, I think there should be a rule that if you're the captain of a club, you can't be a rookie. You should have been figured because out. Because you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't make captain your rookie season. What about Fernando Torres for uh, Atletico Madrid? Yeah. But he didn't, wasn't quite the, wasn't quite a rookie at that stage, you know. No, yeah, fine. But, uh, you know, there's no fine ord chrome out there, you know. That's true. It was very rare that somebody, uh, I mean, if, just to give you an idea how deep I've gone here, Noah Sasa for FC Copenhagen, 17-year-old midfielder, right? I'd never heard of him before. I discovered in my research, apparently he was very dominant in Denmark's defeat of Portugal at last year's under-17 Euros. <laughs> He got an assist and a couple. He was uh, a couple of the key passes in the build up to some goals. I think they beat them four one. I think this this whole process right now, Jason. I don't know for yeah. you, but for me, this feels like we're, we're looking at you. Put a mirror up to yourself. <laughs> yeah, this is um, what a man. So I don't know. So anyway, if you have any questions about the rookies, send them in <laughs> because I have got a stuff your answers for it all ready to go. Uh, a lot of these uh, young lads they are from footballing families mm. that was an interesting uh, thing that you found kind of pattern that I uh, discovered for instance Rocco Simic of Orby Salzburg the forward who's on loan at Zurich in Switzerland at the moment he's from a footballing family Enzo his dad Dario Simic played for AC Milan between 2002 and 2008 won two Champions Leagues and is working as a scout now one goal in the cup <laughs> one goal in the cup I'm, for uh, I'm trying to look at which one of these are the worst yeah <laughs> number of Premier League clubs interested yeah I, I put that in in, in uh, quotation marks quotation marks because you get that a lot plays for Sporting's B team a young player to work up that's nice yeah Um. oh I like this one what the hell is this this is for Andreas Schleiderup Schleiderup of Benfica midfielder 18 that feeling was even more so what? This this is this is taken from a, from an article. That feeling is even more so when Benfica completed the sign of Andreas Schlick from oh god I'm gonna say that Nords Jaland Jaland, who at the time of transfer twenty was the most signed player in football manager twenty twenty three. So Andreas Schlederup is the most signed player in football manager twenty twenty three. He is kind of a, a celebrity within the FM uh, community. Ah, Bruno Iglesias. I like this one, Jason. Yeah. In twenty twenty, Iglesias became. A member of the fellow Spaniard Juan Mata's charity Common Goal and pledged to donate one percent of his wages to the COVID nineteen response. He is the youngest member of this charity. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. He's so silky. Who's that? Desiree Due. Oh yes. He's so silky in the midfield. For Lorenzo Luca, the Italian under twenty one striker now plays for Ajax. I've just put in. He's six foot seven. Because <laughs> I, I I was going to compare him. He's Italian, yeah. Sounds Italian to me, Lorenzo Luca. He's very good. He, he, I was thinking he, he reminded me of uh, Gianluca Scamacca, big physical Luca uh, Tony. presence, or Luca Tony, yeah. Uh, and then I, I was like, so he must be tall. And then I was looking at his height, he's six foot seven. Mm. Mad. Mourinho trusts him. It was that. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, Z- Zale- Zaleski. Yeah. Helping he, him in the under 19. You're a sick, sick boy. So it's all in there. When did you do this? This morning. <laughs> I did this this morning because I just I was going through the checklist and I was like there's just too many rookies that I don't know who they are someone needs to make a list he said someone needs to sort this out on loan at Zurich from a footballing family I love it Jason no I'm I'm putting you down here but I love it it's good it's good this is a good reference for us you know great reference because we're going to develop relationships with these fellas imagine Uh, if we were breakers we could be like um, Dario Esuga he plays for Sporting B yeah now our breaking key you get better by the day first you go this is what it's going to be Jason look yeah oh it's your Europa League oh or it's Champions League my, my apologies no Sporting Lisbon sorry I don't know what it is I'll say Europa League it's Europa League Sporting Lisbon it's a one of one yeah oh we might have it's it's a rookie this might be the lad who's plays for Sporting B <laughs> is it <laughs> Dario Esugo let's go and you put it in a sleeve Jason. you get your sleeve you get your sleeve out your sleeve ready yeah put that in a sleeve that's a huge hit you're going to make millions well done keep well buying done. keep buying keep those spots it. lads keep doing it boys do you know the interesting thing is um, 
it, we could do breaking like kind of like how people you know the show countdown yeah so on countdown when they do the they do the answers and then they kind of go to dictionary corner and they get talking they've done any better we could do like you're doing the breaker you're like it's a one oh oh yeah and you go right let's go to uh spreadsheet corner do you know who i think better than the countdown i think you'd be like uh the guy on pointless <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd be like richard pull, pull him up pull him up i want richard on screen you're wearing the glasses you want, i think I okay think this, yeah i think this is a good analogy he always comes in with some bullshit <laughs> yeah Okay, uh, come on come on how dare you say countdown you're richard all day look at that actually in 1994 his father his father signed for ac milan from red star belgrade <laughs> <laughs> could be one for the milan fans absolutely oh, hey, yeah, and he's yeah. look at this height look at the height of him yes yeah, i'm saying the similarities here it's all there it's all there folks there we go that's so Jason. the point is there's loads of uh rookies in uh, first edition and but do you know what there is a, a, a notable lack of Enzo as you pointed out to me mm. legends yes I'm a sharp eyed as well so I've seen loads of legends around the the on demand checklist so far this year and they're conspicuously absent from this which suggests some sort of segmentation oh, se- segregation even so segregation um, yeah Jason how do you feel about this like if this is the standalone checklist that's going to carry through to flagship chrome light chrome sapphire mm-hmm. how does that make you feel if it, if there's no more just champions league product the, you know merlin chrome is kind of now not merlin chrome necessarily yeah what do you what do you think and what do you feel i i would like personally for some products to still remain just champions league products okay because i think the champions league now whether that be chrome whether that be museum whatever that may be I think the Champions League is just not on the yeah it's just not on the same level as the Europa League the Europa Conference League it is its own thing to get into the Champions League is a big deal and it deserves to have to be ring fenced in at least a, in my opinion in at least a couple of products yes and I don't really you know there's obviously arguments from collectors to say but you know I'm a fine yard collector and if I don't you know if they're not in there I can't get Santi Jimenez or whatever or if uh there's obviously arguments with the companies to say yeah but then we can't put him in we can't put them in you know and I'm kind of just saying like I don't care about all that (laughs) I think the Champions League is has to be revered a little bit Mm. it's not you can't have just everything as the Champions League and the Europa Conference League you know you can't have like Real Madrid and West Ham in every product fair (laughs) you know that has they can't like at some point yeah, there has but to be some sort of sense. Inception to it. last year was all, or at least Europa League, wasn't it? I think it was Europa and Champions League. Yeah, interesting though, isn't it? Yeah, they started doing it last year. Okay. Um, I wouldn't. I mean, I hope that this isn't going to be four sets in a row that are the same checklist. No, I would like to see some. And obviously, it would, the checklist will be a bit different because there will be legends, I think, in some of those checklists. But I'm just hoping this first edition becomes a cooler box if it's the only one that's a mix out of the Champions League quote unquote Champions League products like Merlin can still be a mix that's fine yeah but I th- like it, I would be cool if this was a standalone and then Chrome Chrome Light Sapphire come out and are just Champions League sets yes and then Merlin comes out and it's kind of like this one but then there's also Legend that would be cool yeah I think there's I, I'm basically now that we know that like they're they're playing around with this stuff and they're kind of working on there's it there's a method to it now I'm interested to see what's the method yeah I agree I'm hoping the method wasn't to just turn the Champions League product into a European club competition product yeah but we never know we'll see I mean there's also a cool thing that this might be like the they might say right, we're going to make first first edition the rookie brand it could be anything like first edition could just be we're going to do all club competitions and it's going to be unique and different to everything else which I, like, I think in retrospect by the time the season's over first edition might actually look like a really really cool product yeah in comparison like I like it I, like the, I don't hate the price I do I do wish it was like I feel like last year it was more than two parallels. I think it was three number parallels and they yeah. were all numbered to less than 30. Three or four maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, I wish the auto chance was bigger because there's so many autos going around. First edition, the print run is not that big. Why not make it, you know, what what they're trying to make it. Like, fair enough, the stock isn't chrome stock, but why not make it a really juicy product? Yeah. It's first edition, it's limited. It should be That should be one of the hottest products of the year, I think. Mm. So yeah. we basically we're going to see what happens we'll wait and see can I actually say this maybe isn't even maybe for Hobby HQ a lot of people that bought a lot of stuff off our website have been hitting a lot of heat 
Yeah, a lot of heat. There's been one on ones from SPFL Crown getting hit. Cameron Carter Vickers, everyone wanted it. Everyone thought we hit it and wanted to, wanted to buy it off us. Yeah. We had a uh, one bundle produce two Celtic autographs, Jason. Unbelievable. Hendrick Larson and Kyogo. We we sold a dynasty case to to a breaker and he hit an of two Lewis Hamilton. I'm get, I'm over there on YouTube. I'm getting two Motherwell autos. <laughs> yeah, you, you're opening the wrong box. Yeah. Sorry, bro. Terrible stuff. Sorry to hear. Um, we got some news from uh, fresh from PSA. We had PSA news recently in Europe. Oh, I mean, Dave and Adams are, are uh, accepting or oh, setting up a PSA kiosk in their shop in the Netherlands. <laughs> Call it a kiosk. Well, they say it's a kiosk. Okay. Um. And then CGC, so CSG, um, they were at the Munich Card Show okay. last November, and they were. I was talking to a couple of their people, and they were saying, "Yeah, we're interested in getting set up. We're not sure where to get set up." And it turns out they set up in Munich. <laughs> so they were like, "Well, we the same grant. We could just set up here. We could just never bring all this equipment back." So uh, CGC Trading Cards is exciting to announce that we will now be accepting submissions from collectors and dealers at the company's Munich, Germany office starting today, March 28, uh, 2023, as so it was two days ago. Um, and they got a little video here, look. <laughs> Why don't we have videos like this? Big news! CCG Trading Cards now accepting submissions in Munich. Oh, look at that. At least, the, which one is this? Oh, yeah. This is CSG. But that, so that's this is one we had the Mbappe of. So this is Pokemon. Tra- trading cards are blue, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I presume we're going to see sports as well. You never know. Maybe we're not going to see sports. If we're not going to see sports, I don't know what's happening here. The Charizard. It's Charizard. It so, so hang on a second. So trading cards, not sports cards. What's going on here? Are you sharing news that has nothing to do with our platform, sir? Hang on a second. All the time on the rookie checklist, and then the, <laughs> the whole thing's falling to pieces. I want people to look at the sports card nonsense thing and then understand that Jason put that level of time into that <laughs> Excel sheet instead of putting time into how does my microphone work. Your microphone works great. We found out. I'm talking about your microphone. Oh, my microphone. I was talking in your first person. Yes. Okay. If anyone seriously, if anyone hasn't heard the sports card nonsense <laughs> appearance, it's no. very funny. It's good. It's good stuff. Funny for Jason, maybe uncomfortable for me as he was lingering like yeah. Pikachu on my shoulder. I don't think they they don't do video of their Pikachu. podcast, should they? Don't. don't know. I don't think they do. For the best. Um, but they did have a very the episode that we were on also features scandalous, uh, stuff. scandalous stuff. Yeah, I was happy with that, Jason. I said, Wow, we made one of the big episodes. Yeah. And you managed to really fuck it up. And what an impression we made. <sighs> you get a chance like that. Listen, everyone gets one. Um, I feel like you get a lot. I get a lot. I get one every week, <laughs> once a week. So anyway, never mind that CSG news. Basically, they are CSG are looking to open in Europe, and they've started off by accepting trading cards. I don't see so what they're going not to do. the biggest market in Europe, Grant. And they're not going to do sports cards because why is this news on our podcast? Because they told me they were going to do sports cards, and then they announced this news, and I naturally assumed that it was the same. But it's not. But I guess it's not. Well, sure enough, if they can accept accept a Pokemon card, I'm sure they'll be able to accept a, a sports card soon enough, Jason. That's what I'm thinking. So be patient. <sighs> Would you submit with them? No. <laughs> so don't worry. Okay, listener question. They have nice holders, but I wouldn't submit it either. Here's a you're gonna you you're gonna love this listener question. Thank it? God. Hey guys, had another question for you when you get a moment. This is from Zach, right? Either for the show or via DM. We're doing it on the show, Zach. I recently bought a 2022 National Treasure Messi of 49 match worn patch card that I am pretty excited about. I've been looking for a licensed match used Messi patch card for a bit, but everything I found. Pro- pow, pow, pow. F Leaf and F the other one. What's the other one? Futera. Maybe not. No, they're licensed. Uh, he just took a shot at Leaf without saying the name. Continue. But everything I found prior to this card was either player worn or not associated with any match. Previous release of Immaculate NT, Museum, Obsidian, etc. were all player-worn at best. Is it possible that the 2022 National Treasures Messi patch cards are the first match-worn pe- Messi patches? And if so, could they have any impact on this car- on his- on this card's prices or place in the hobby in the future? I know Leaf and Futera both have match-used patches, but both being unlicensed, it never had the same appeal. Thanks for your help, Zach. Now. What do you think of that, Enzo? I love... Has Zach exposed... A hobby secret? No, not quite. I mean, he he 
he has decided to come in and care about the card he cared about the validity of the patch more than just buying into this is from this set and it's a patch and i don't really care if he never put it on i don't know if you've seen the panini stuff with the ufc um with misha tate did you see that i didn't so misha tate put up uh, misha tate was a, a former champion in in the ufc and uh, the women's division um i don't remember the weight class forgive me for that it might have been 115 125 i don't know i don't know what weight she was it right? doesn't it's not polite to ask anyway she was watching some fights which this actually triggered me because she, she was watching fights and i went on my tv i'm like does ufc on i was trying to find during the international break i was like is there, is there? yeah i couldn't find it but she basically she has her tv on she's like watching the fights and getting some like panini match worn memorabilia stuff done and she had like a cap on her that had like a panini, like it had the tag still on it but basically she was like i have a big panini ship me a big box of clothes and i'm putting them on now so they can put them in the car so she was just at her, her house putting caps on and shit but and that's then, not match worn that's but it's, it's that athlete worn athlete worn so yeah he, in, uh, which is so fucked up but um zach here is saying like i don't like that and i'm off looking for a real a real match uh, worn match worn now the only thing is he asked is this the first ever yeah and he was kind of excited about that it's definitely not it's definitely not definitely not oh no the first ever patches of messi i believe were 2013 in the messy icon set in the messy icon set Jesus. my god the set that i desperately tried to buy a patch of when no one really knew about it and it was cheap and the guy who i was trying to buy it off was in canada and he was like i don't ship outside of canada sir yeah i was like oh great and i should have just used an address of a canadian Sh- family member ah but i didn't but i'm pretty sure they must be match worn right and they were really nice so I'm gonna find it here, and um, boom, boom behind. Here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna send this to you, Jason. This is this is in the drive just above it. So if you take that and go to the back, that was just quick off the top of my head. We are knowledge banks over here, Soccer United. At the back, I will read it out, Jason. As soon as you put it on the screen. Go ahead. And go to the back. And zoom it up. If you can. Should be able to. Maybe we have to go back one. X out of this. X. And then click the arrow on this side. Like click the arrow. Yeah. And then boom. Boom. Yeah. Go up a bit. There you go. This enclosed game worn material is guaranteed by Icon Shop Limited. Lionel Messi wheels away after scoring. Da, 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 da. But yeah, that's game worn. Right. But is it licensed? Um I it's see. Messi's company. But is it licensed by Barcelona? <coughs> well, the Barcelona crest is on display. So I'd imagine, yes. True. It says images courtesy of Getty Images. At the bag. Right, so... That is Messi's like, company. It's So this is this is a Messi... Official Messi card. I suppose selection. it depends what you mean by licensed. Yeah. Like, this is not licensed for any particular... They've just bought that image off Getty Images. He owns the patch. And it's him. And it's him. But like it's officially licensed. But it's not a Champions League product. No. No. But that's clearly the Champions League. Yeah, but it's not. There's, there's Leaf cards that are clearly the Champions League. Yeah, but they don't have all the badges. Like, the Champions League logo is on display there twice. So, but it ultimately comes down to what... But this is not enough. Nowhere does it say licensed by UEFA. You see? I don't think it is. I would call that his first ever... Licensed because it's not it's not makeshift. It's him. That'd be me. That's just me. Right. Okay. I'd like to write in and tell me what your uh, feeling is about this card. Feeling is about this card, and I I think that's a good that's a good catch. Okay. It's a good catch. And there's better. That was a bad. That was. But there are. There are really nice ones. I was interested to see if any of the old uh, select patches were match worn. Hmm. Um. Player worn. Like if you go back to the link that I that I just sent you. Yep. And um, back, back one like back to search results. And then. Don't think I can go back to search results from that. I'll line. just add this one. So. I don't. I don't think I can do that. Um. Check that one. All right. It's a lot of clicking around here today on the uh, on the old podcast. Sorry for all the Spotify people. 
Oh, the Spotify people. By the way, Spotify people. So sorry about this. So sorry about our elevation. But yeah, this one. This is one that I almost bought. Very similar to this. The patch at the bottom there, Jason. The Barcelona patch. Beautiful. Lovely. Ah. What part of the jersey is this? The crest? Don't know. I mean, I don't know. Must be a bit of the crest. Might be. I mean, I don't know. We might say. We might say it at the back. I don't know. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Nice. Anyway. Those are the OGs. Yeah. As far as Messi concerned. And, and same, same with his first autograph as well. The same set. Incredible set. I would love to buy a sealed box of that set. So there you go. Messi icons 2013. If you've got one to sell, get in touch. Let us know. Let us know. Um, but I think in terms of just tops and Panini releases, Zach is definitely onto something. Ah, oh, you're saying that it that could be the first time. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Because I I can't. I'm looking at museum. I'm looking at select, and I'm just seeing player worn. Hmm. So, you know, I'm looking at 2018. Player worn 2018 national treasures. Mm mm mm. So there you go. If you have, if you have a card, oh, hang on a second, hang on a second, hang on one second. Not Chronicles twenty nineteen, Jace. Hang on a second. There's no photo of the back. Panini threads. There's no photo of the back. Nah, I don't believe it then. Come on. I refuse to believe it, Jason. Unbelievable. So if you have a card that you, uh, I get what you're saying now. I think he's on to something. Yeah. Hmm. you see even like on this right this is a uh, fabric of the game now fabric of the game this is this is from Chronicles as well surely this is from a game from a game it's called fabric of the game and yet you click onto it and it's I'll do it the other way and it says this enclosed player worn slash used material is guaranteed I need to know that it's match worn you know, I need to know that. I get it. Before I put my hand in my pocket. I get it. So we're saying National Treasures says it's match worn. Yeah. You know, my only issue, my only beef, and here's me critiquing, National Treasures has a lot of Barcelona patches for the Argentina kit. Yeah. I don't love that. I don't, I, we've, we've never, we've been... I frown upon that. Uh, noted opponents of that practice for quite a long time. But hang on a second, look at this. Oh no. Match worn, not yeah. pale. Yeah, okay. It's clean. It's clean. The only non-clean thing about it is that it's a Barcelona jersey patch. And it's like, if you have Barcelona match worn jersey patches, like Messi has been playing for PSG for two years now. Yeah. And this is Argentina. Why have you not used that in a product with him and his Barca kit? You yeah. seem to have them for a while now. Very uh, strange. Strange stuff. Strange stuff. Now, Andy, you wanted to take us through some of the old uh, golden auction results. A lot has happened. The 2023 March Elite Auction is ended, mm. and the soccer results were of interest. Yeah, we, we kick it off at 2-1-1, one of one, Jason. Yep. So, the Messi Breakaway Prism, which was, I think, one of the last 1-1 one of one from World Cup Prisms to pop out. Like, I think we've seen the World Cup uh, Mosaic, we've seen the Prism, we've seen the Prism Choice, we've seen the National Treasures, we've seen the Eminences coming out, but this was one of the few Prisms, especially... That hadn't been hit yet so hit came out was only an 8.5 went to auction still did a big number sixty two thousand dollars jason mm. and big. next to it the yeah. one of one from hobby prism of cristiano ronaldo which unfortunately only got a, a 6.5 with bgs there was some corner issues with this card i believe still did thirty five thousand, which is interesting because people say don't grade a one of one and did da, 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 but like would that have done more or less if it i mean maybe would have done more if it was raw but also could have resulted in some issues if it was raw. Yeah, I think if you're putting like, like regard whatever about don't grade a one of one and all that stuff, like if it's a one of one World Cup prism, you're putting it up for auction, you have to grade it. Yeah, you can't grade it. You literally can't grade it raw. Unless it's eBay. Yeah. Or or auction it raw. Um the next two were actually really interesting, Jason. The the of ten kaboom. Yeah. Um of Kylian Mbappe, which that is from Select, I believe. Is it? What is that from? 2018. 20, it could be Don Ross, yeah. 
Any team in America. I assume it was Don Ross. I'm confused. It doesn't say in the front. That's a really bad label from Beckett. It just says a uh, 2018 Panini Kaboom. I don't think they were in select. But Panini throw them kind of in multiple brands, don't they? They do. Must have been Don Ross. Though. Uh, da, 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 da. people aren't saying. Still, it doesn't say it's anywhere. Say on the PSA slabs. PSA don't mess about there. This is if anyone wants to know why PSA had number one of the game. It says Panini Kaboom. Oh Jesus! Nobody knows. Okay, I don't. I don't actually know. I really like that image of Mbappe. Though. I don't know what's going on. Where has this come out of? This Kaboom. It was. It's not like the Don Ross where Jason Sancho was a rookie. The 2018-19 Don Ross. Yeah. Yeah. But, but just keep saying 2018 Kaboom. Everybody. That's all it says. It must be It must be Don Ross. Yeah, that's just a It is, because that's the only one that he's in his PSU. He's not... He's, oh, no, he's in his PSU kit and select. But, like, select doesn't have Kabooms. It might. <sighs> it might. Panini, select... Checklist. Kaboom. No. Yeah, select has Kabooms. The... Uh, Oh Pulisic, David Alaba, Leo Messi. Are you listening? It's 2018, people. Let's okay. not get bogged down. 2018 right. Kaboom. Yeah. Everyone's going to tell us, lads, it's from this. But like, you know what? The grading company should be telling me that. Yeah. But anyway, that's an of 10 Kaboom, which gold, is, gold Kabooms are premium, premium, premium. And to be honest, that's probably one of Mbappe's best cards, period. Agreed. Right? If you think about his early... If you think anything 2016 to 2018... Yeah. That's probably one of his best cards. Yeah, I, I, I would say... You're dead right. And in a gold kaboom, crazy amazing. Um, but that was kind of coming up against a gold Champions League chrome. First mm. ever Champions League chrome. And it's rookie number, uh, jersey number, quote unquote. Although I don't know if that works because his jersey was 29 back then, as you can see in the image. I think jersey number only works if it's the jersey he's wearing. In that's the what I think people image. are, that's a, I think Ken has gone a bit mad there. Yeah. Jersey number, no. But no. You, like, you can't call that jersey number. 29 or 50 is jersey number. Yeah. Grow up. But yeah, the, the Kaboom did better than that. But at the same, people are kind of shocked with that. But at the same time, Kaboom's obviously rarer. Um, yeah. And of 10 gold Kaboom. And they're basically from the same era. Like maybe you could say the Kaboom is the following season. But like it's, very, it's all very blurry with Mbappe. Um, so they were great. Um, the Messi 1 of 1. I think, I think that's just testament. This is actually huge. Right? The Messi 1 of 1 from World Cup Qatar, Jason. Doing yeah. more than the Haaland to its right. Is a testament to how much... Like people say, does the World Cup matter? Is this going to happen at the World Cup? Is that going to happen? This is just a base Messi from World Cup, Road to Qatar. Obviously, it's one of one, but it's not an autograph. It's not a patch card. It's not really anything. It's not even a PSA 8. That is a PSA 7. Yeah. Of a National Treasures non auto, non base, and it's Road to Qatar. Like, it's kind of a hideous card to a degree. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit that of a, road, it's, it's a Frankenstein's monster of a card. And yeah, it's 24,000. If Messi doesn't win that World Cup, that is not 24,000. No. So like that is... People are always like, the World Cup, I don't understand. The World Cup is is this. It's that weird one-of-one one obscure Messi card doing more than a Haaland autograph. Gold autograph. Haaland rookie gold autograph. My apologies. There That's you go. Power of the World Cup. Power of the World Cup, people. What do you think of this uh, Cristiano Ronaldo sign boot? Uh, Rainbow. Rainbow. Crazy. Crazy, a crazy item. Crazy. Have a look at that. You got your bronze, you got your gold, you got your uh, base, and you got your one on one. They could organize that for all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it gets more rare, more rare, less rare, more rare. Crazy, brilliant, beautiful. Crazy, brilliant, beautiful. That's what I'll say about that. Yeah. Vintage again, coming through clutch, doing big, big things. Yeah. Vintage quietly doing its thing, Jason. Always. In the background. Autograph one of one doing twenty thousand. Yeah. We love that. About the price of a box of that that eminence. Uh, there's a Messi from twenty thirteen icons, Jason. Oh. Fifteen thousand. That that'd be a beautiful card to own. One of those. The gold ink, the ballon d'or, beautiful. Mm. To its left though is a, a messy rookie. To be honest, that that's testament to how desirable those twenty thirteen cards are. Both yeah. in PSA nine and it's up there with the rookie price. It's holding its own. Holding its own, it's his own unique thing. I think after the rookie, that's kind of the next best thing, Jason. Mm. Um, Ronaldo, flawless. Again, a very underrated 2015 16 flawless. We've seen that at the card show, Jason. That is oh, 2015 flawless set. for me is primo stuff. Then we get into this Panini Eminence badge. Remember, we pointed out a few a while ago that they had badges. We didn't even know they had crests. Um, that's obviously the Argentina one of one 
diamonds, pearls, God knows what's in there. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's not even... Could open a small jeweler shop if you took that card apart. It's not even graded because I believe Eminence just came with the kind of ability to not have to grade it. Yeah. Um, it excites me because Select from Panini this year is going to have club badges as case hits. Mm. So the one on one of Barcelona of you know Manchester. I would love to put a Napoli, uh, a rainbow of badges, or not a rainbow, but like a set collection of badges together. You mean of all the badges? All the badges. That's yeah. not a rainbow. Grow. No, it's a second. That's a set, Grow. isn't it? Then we have the of twenty five Mojo landmarks again doing big things. Kylian Mbappe gold autograph of ten eleven thousand. Then Ronaldo, if you go down, sorry Jason, Ronaldo, I would say very low. 2017 18, Ronaldo Chrome autograph, red of 10, 10,000. But that, that kind of speaks, I think, in the opposite to Messi winning the World Cup and that one card up there being crazy. Ronaldo has definitely had a really tough time um, since the World Cup. And I think his prices reflect that. Yeah. In the short term, you know, could be a good buy for Ronaldo. I mean, if you're doing it long term, in this current moment, I think he's a good buy. The Mbappe Zebra, I think, is underpriced because people love the field view. From select, I don't really know how PSA ten of that does ten k. Mm-hmm. Should be a bit more. I don't know. That, it was an interesting round of auctions. I could I could be here all day. I mean, Antu Fatty's down there as well, Jason. There there is a few more. So I mean, maybe the cards. Mbappe uh, Mbappe's underperformance could have something to do with them getting knocked out of Champions League. I think just Mbappe for some reason he need he just needs to leave PSG and he'll be fine. Yeah, to be honest, um, has a lot of nice cards. Yeah, no, interesting. I think even these on-card Maradonas kind of speak to the opposite of hype. Um, you know, when he passed away, there was a huge, huge peak of interest, Jason. Where are the on-card Maradonas? They're just down a bit. Um, you know, very low. Oh, here? We're talking about a man that cannot sign on-card anymore and didn't sign that many on-cards. Yeah. And the compared, and also, again, one of the greatest players of all time. And one of the greatest sets in terms of eminence, um, especially 2018. I would say very affordable in you know not affordable but in terms of the other cards well it could be that um, like if I look at everything we just looked at I think those Maradonas would be the thing I would spend 5,000 on if that's what I had if I had a 10,000 budget I don't know I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the soccer market is just in a slight um, m- like a minor trough just between the hype of the World Cup and the end of the season like we did have the World Cup and it was like obviously you know, a month or two of kind of hangover interest in the World Cup and obviously Messi's prices are still where they are but then it's not quite the end of the season you know so like we, like you know, it's it's post World Cup but I'm just saying in terms of Maradona like his peak interest was obviously like when he passed away because that's when the media all just celebrated how amazing yeah. he was and I think because most of the people that are in cards are not hardcore soccer people mm. the, obviously the supply demand dynamics for Maradona the demand is obviously down because yeah. there's not really much about him and blah 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 like maybe when he has a huge documentary and something like that but like in terms of like if you wanted to invest long term that's one of probably the safest purchases you could make on card Maradona from Eminence for 5,000 it's not bad I think not hashtag not financial advice people look at this Pele, Pele. 2016 tops transcendent Pele framed autograph that's a gorgeous card you're not wrong. Come on. Listen. 2,400. You people are sick. Is that on card? Uh, yeah. Why can't I see it? Where, did, where was that? Oh, no. Oh, I no. I don't know. I don't see it. Where do you, where do you find this? Uh, it's on the same page. Like. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Sorry. It's on card. Yeah, the fact that it's from Tops 2016 Transcend is such a bizarre yeah. set. Is this similar to the baseball set? Like, was this not I think so, set? yeah. Yeah, soccer. It says soccer legend. That's like, yeah, it's baseball. On the back it shows tops baseball. I, um, I don't understand how that's $2,400. I wish we seen that, Jesus. So do I. I would have bought that. In fairness, we can't bid on... We can't bid on Golden. On Golden. We haven't fully but, you know. Digitalized ourselves. That's a beautiful card. Is that framed? Yeah, framed. Yeah. Beautiful. It's just Beautiful. And again, he's not going to... I mean, in fairness, he signed a lot of autographs. I know, he but... He can't anymore. He can't anymore, so the supply has finally dried up. Um, Right. So, in terms of your football week, it's been an international break. Yeah, Ireland had a great performance against France, but yes. ultimately lost. Ultimately lost. Uh, Benjamin Pavard and Mike Magnon to thank for, yeah. for that. And the Irish fella that just passed the ball to Pavard. Terrible mistake. But, yeah, I mean... 
happens when you're actually trying to play. And you're not sure. You you, you don't think Benjamin Pavard's going to bang it in. I'm, so, I'm shocked he's playing again. Like, what happened there? Yeah, fell out of favour then. Just back into favour. Back into form. Um, not great. Leo Messi became only the second South American to score 100 uh, international goals. After? Oh, one sec. After who? But we're working on it. We're working on it. So we're back anyway. We're in a wide angle um, just to... Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Um, what were we saying? Go to the mailing list and sign up at SoccerIsNightly.com. If you're a postal service person, please come at 8 a.m., not 7. If you're delivering to a residential address, 7 a.m. is not... Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would it be a residential address? <laughs> but, you know. I'm sleepy. Ends up sleepy. Then he comes to the podcast. He's yawning. People are like, what's wrong with this episode of the podcast? I'm yawning away. Um, people aren't leaving them five star reviews on. oh there's actually Spotify. sorry there's one more listener question to talk about oh sorry this is from Tim this is an email I got wrapped up in the excitement of the Golden Elite auction um, here's an email from Tim right hi there first off thanks for taking the time to read this email Tim you're giving us content there's no problem I don't use social media anymore due to a variety of reasons keep them to yourself that's your personal business you're perfectly entitled to do whatever you want I don't blame you I always wanted to say I've been listening to your cameos on different podcasts talking soccer and F1 especially the baseball basketball American football market overseas uh, main reason, reason for reaching out is to inquire about the uh, soccer vintage market my boss over here in California is originally from Manchester and a huge Tottenham fan we often talk about soccer and his knowledge of the 1950s and English football has been quite inspiring I picked up a very cheap Cadet Sweets uh, Jimmy Greaves Cadet Sweets is that the same people make Cadet Cola That'd be great to know. I'm going to find out right now. Um, I picked up a very cheap Cadet Suites, Jimmy Greaves, uh, PSA 8, to which he had a per... Oh, he had a personal run-in with Greavesy as a youth. That's exciting. He about melted to the ground when I gave it to him. Here's my question. Why aren't vintage... Why isn't soccer vintage as popular or as valuable as in other sports? And who else is highly desirable? Been looking at, been looking at Bobby Charlton as well. Thank you. Cheers and be well, Tim. Well, first of all, Tim, thank you very much for your email. And congratulations on getting off social media. Must be nice. Uh, any news on the Cadet Cola? Yeah, I. Do I, you know what? Do you know, and do you know what? I don't know if you. How you I feel like. Uh, I feel like you're the kind of guy that likes to go against the grain. You know. Sure. So when there's a fad out there, you like to kind of go. Oh, I don't like that fad out there. Right. You stay away. But I went straight to AI. I didn't go to Google. Jason. I went straight to AI. I said they'll not. Okay. So I asked. Yeah. I said are Cadet Sweets and are, are Cadet Sweets the same as Cadet Cola? And straight away. Without nothing. Do you know what I got back? What? No. Cadet Sweets and Cadet Cola are not the same, Jason. Yeah. And then they give you more context because they're the best in the business. Sounds like a Google result. Cadet Sweets are a type of candy made by Cadbury Company. Oh. While Cadet Cola is the type of candy, that is a type of soda produced by, do you know? No. The Coca-Cola Company in some countries, including South Africa. It's possible both Cadet Sweet and Cadet Cola share the same branding or marketing name Cadet in some regions, but they're different products with distinct flavors and ingredients. So that kind of took it very literal. Is the okay? So it kind of sh- it like failed at the old uh, yeah. Human it's, ultimately, test it's, it's, a, it's a computer. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Um. So why are, I I would say Enzo, you gave a very interesting answer to a similar question on sports card nonsense, uh, which basically would explain this as well, which is that. Um, you were talking about F1 I think at the time but in soccer a lot of people who are into the hobby are only getting into soccer now so the reason that vintage is not huge in soccer is that they haven't had a decades long relationship with the sport whereas like baseball collectors they remember their you know their their dad's favourite baseball players or their granddad's favourite baseball players and they hurt you know whereas like a lot of soccer collectors they're that doesn't have any favourite soccer player the demand for vintage right now is low but the supply is equally low and the kind of thing you'd be banking on when you're buying soccer vintage is that at some point in time the demand for vintage is going to be higher and if you have that supply which will be a low supply that's kind of where the where the big books start showing up and to be honest we're seeing that bit by bit it's, it, it's, it's a longer game but it's definitely a safer game if you're approaching it in the right way in terms of you're buying authentic vintage it's graded already you're going for low pops high grade and when i say high grade it could be a psa3 if there's nothing graded higher if there's only a few things graded higher it becomes very desirable and you see that at the highest highest end of the soccer vintage market when you look at what maradona's original rookie is 
Yeah. Like I'm I'd like to, I'm trying to pick one up and it's hard to even find one in a one point five PSA and when you do find it it's it's a few thousand. Mm. So across the board I think that, that eventually I mean it's hard to know because you feel like at some point maybe there could be kind of a lost connection where like the kind of the fathers the grandfathers don't tell you about Jimmy Greaves and it kind of gets lost yeah but in general that shouldn't be the case do you know yeah a horrible future in which a person's history of Tottenham strikers starts with Harry Kane uh-huh. um, do you know one day so that I hope that answers your question Tim thank you for your email one day Enzo this will be considered a vintage podcast we're kind of playing the long game ourselves Oh, you're vintage for sure. Vintage for sure. Um, and speaking of vintage, we're out of time. Can I just say, I look forward to the day that we're talking about someone winning the Ballon d'Or and we find out they were on that Excel sheet you did today, Jason. Oh, yeah. And your note beside them was like a Bleacher Report once made a meme about them. Yeah. And I and, and then it says, and everyone holds it, oh, it lords all over me and says, see that you were talking about this tweet? You never know. You never saw. You never saw the the skill. You never saw the talent this boy had. That I knew. You underestimate. Him. Yeah, and it'd be rewritten. So, um. All right. Well, anyway, that's it. That's us. See you on Monday. See you on Monday. Have Jason. a good weekend. Enjoy the return of club football. Everyone. I believe it's Thursday. Yeah. Again. It's a big Saturday, I believe. City versus Liverpool. Yeah. Their classicer, which I think is ultimately going to be three two to Bayern again. Yeah. And uh, there's another game, but I can't remember. Frozen only are playing. That must be the third one. Must be. All right. <laughs>